wanted to do a beginner's guide to investing in physical silver. I've had a lot of emails sent to me about what to do next. Investing in silver is quite unlike anything else that people have done in their investment careers. Normally you open up an E-Trade account, put some digital digits in, and start trading away. Owning physical silver comes with a lot of responsibility, as it is a physical investment in your possession. My first rule of buying silver is only buy physical silver and keep it in your possession. Don't get suckered into SLV, custodial accounts, e-silver, mining stocks, precious metals, IRAs, or any other instrument that does not have your wealth in your absolute control. You have to understand why you're buying silver. It is to have real tangible wealth in your control while the fiat paper wealth world burns. I can think of nothing more maddening than to get this far, see the potential in silver, and then be caught in the wrong form of it. And don't think that you're going to go about doing this like trading stocks. One day this will all end. The Titanic world economy is sinking and there's only few lifeboats left. Silver is one of the best ones that I have seen. I have always told my wife that it's better to be years early to this party than one day too late. The first purchase I recommend is an American Silver Eagle. It is in my opinion the best bullion coin on the market. In fact I bought a proof 2005 Silver Eagle just to symbolize the year that I went all in on silver. The Silver Eagles are by far the most popular silver coin in the world. By law, the Treasury is supposed to make enough to meet demand and only use domestic silver production. In 2011, that was pushed to the extreme and has since dropped off since then. The United States' total mine production for an entire year is only 40 million ounces, which is about a billion dollars worth of silver a year, hardly anything in the grand financial scheme of quadrillion dollar fiat markets. Buying American silver eagles also forces the issue with our battle with the banksters. The more that they have to admit that they cannot meet demand, the quicker their illusion collapses. The United States Mint would meet all the demand that it can handle if the price of silver was allowed to rise. I am sure again we will see demand outpace the entire mine production of the United States. When buying silver eagles, shop around for the best deal, but don't get too wrapped around the wheel about premiums over spot. When I first started stacking silver, I was mad that I had to pay $1.50 over spot on a $7 American Eagle. Now the premiums are twice that at about $3. The good thing is, as these coins become more valuable, the premiums will rise also. Right now there's about a $70 premium on a 1 ounce gold American Eagle. I think it will be cool when the premium on a silver coin will be more than I paid for the whole coin. There are a ton of other national bullion coins out there, like the Canadian Maple Leaf, Mexican Libertads, Chinese Pandas, Australian Koalas and Kookaburras, and Silver Britannias. They are very beautiful and command higher premiums based off of their relative scarcity. I cannot bring myself to buy any coin that has the Queen of England on it. It's just a matter of principle for me and not having the engraving of an elitist ruler on my treasure. Silver rounds are a great alternative to the national bullion coins. If they come from reputable refiners, their purity is certified. They have significantly less premium per coin, but they're not as well known. I personally would rather have the Mercedes of coins, the American Silver Eagle, then one more ounce of silver for every 40 that I bought. If you're on a tight budget and more of the survival mindset, then constitutional silver is the best for you. I hated using the term junk silver in describing this treasure. Constitutional silver is merely American coins that has silver in them before 1964. Most of them are 90% silver, but there are some of them that are 40% silver depending on the year and coin. This is probably the most economical choice to buy coins because the premiums are so small. They are sold by the coin, the roll, and by the bag. These coins are great for having small denominations that are easily recognizable as money in survival and barter situations. I believe constitutional silver will give you the most bang for your buck in the future, as it is the most recognizable and divisible silver coin out there. Constitutional silver will also probably be the first coins that totally disappear off the market as people plow into this very popular low premium form of silver. I do recommend that you stay away from any numismatic coins. There is way too much premium and not enough silver. And in my opinion, they're a total scam. If you're going to invest in, say, more than $100,000 of silver, you're going to have to start looking at buying bars. Silver bars are more for bulk purchases, even though that there are some really cool 5 to 10 ounce silver bars available. These silver bars are great for easy storage and low premiums. They are not as sexy as a coin, but they get the job done when it comes to preserving your wealth. They easily stack and you don't really have to care about taking care of them because they're really the work truck of your stash. Some worry about drilled and filled bars from the 80s. For the most part I'm not concerned about it because it's been 30 years since then 
and we've not had any real motivation to forge these bars. I am sure that most of them are out of circulation since no reputable refiner is going to sell them. When I bought my 100 ounce bars, I bought Johnson & Matthew bars that had serial numbers and have designs on the back that are hard to replicate on the front and back. When you are purchasing or taking delivery of these bars, look hard at the small and short side of the brick. If it is a fake, you should be able to see something different about it. If you're not comfortable with it for any reason, you can ask to have them switched out before you take delivery. I do not recommend even thinking about buying 1,000 ounce bars because they are too heavy to move and I don't trust parties involved in the Comex. So where do I buy? The best deals that I've gotten have been through garage sales, local newspaper ads, Craigslist, and gun shows. Here is where you deal directly with the seller and there's no middleman. You can often get silver at or below spot. Sometimes the sellers are desperate and will, and will make good deals for you just to get the cash. I would caution you to be careful when dealing with these people on a personal level. We've all heard stories about people being lured by con men and being robbed. If you do buy something off these personal sites, do it in public like a restaurant or a coffee shop and please bring somebody with you as backup. In all the transactions that I've done, I've met a lot more good people out there who are just like you than they have been bad guys, so don't get paranoid about this option. Another benefit for buying this way is that there's no paper trail. You could literally move a huge stash of cash without anybody knowing about it. It's literally a black market where you can secretly and legally ditch your fiat paper for real wealth. This plays well to all those that don't like the government intrusion in our lives. I've had a mixed bag of purchasing from local coin shops. They are a layer of middlemen trying to make a living off the buy and sell spread. They tend to only want to sell you numismatic coins because they have so much markup in them. Coin store owners are very savvy investors and tend to pull inventory off their shelves when the prices crash. I don't blame them, but it makes it very difficult to buy from them when the time is most opportune. One thing I highly recommend is to visit your local coin shop just to physically see and hold this treasure. We have become so detached from real money and that we actually have to physically experience it again in order to believe deep down what we're doing is the right thing to do. Buying online is probably the easiest and best way to go overall. I have personally done business with many of the largest dealers out there, and I have very little complaints with them. They have competitive prices and a huge selection. One added layer of expense to you that you do have to figure into your calculations is shipping, but at the end of the day, don't get your panties wrapped in a bunch over these extra expenses. When this all goes down, no one is going to care how much you spent on premiums or shipping, only the fact that you have bought the real thing. One thing I will caution you on any online purchase is shipping times. There are far too many dealers out there who play with your money. If you do not get your silver within three to seven days, you got problems. There are companies out there who will hold your money for 30 days. They'll lock you in on one price and then wait for the price to drop so that they can make a bigger buy spread. This is very dangerous to deal with businesses like that. While this plan works in a declining market, the time that you may be buying, the market could go against them and they may not be able to fulfill your order. And then what's left? They declare bankruptcy and you're out your money and your silver opportunity. So don't be lured in by free shipping or they forgot to place your order or whatever. If you don't get your silver within three to seven days, or at least a confirmation of it, ask for your money back immediately. Every package I have received is in a plain unmarked package. This might not be a concern, but if you're ordering a lot of bullion like green monster boxes, it is not out of the realm of possibility that your local public servant sees that Joe Smith at 123 Apple Lane is getting a lot of heavy unmarked boxes shipped to his house. Sometimes you can throw them off by saying, oh, it's batteries for my solar panel or car parts or something heavy like that just to kind of throw them off the case. However unlikely it may be as a security concern from you, here are some of the tricks that I've used in the past. Buy before you move places. Ship it to a friend's or family's house that you trust. Ship it to a place of business that you know the owner or that you work at. Ship it to a rental that you own. Place the order through a coin shop and then pay him when it comes in. I'm sure that there's other ways of spreading it out. Another way to buy in bulk with relative secrecy is to buy online and then go pick it up from their vault. I had this most thrilling time picking up my stash in a rental van and I was armed to the teeth. This is not for everybody and you have to check with your local authorities about carrying firearms in your vehicle. And it also could be very nerve wracking but I'm a Marine and I was used to this. So where do I store it? I have two simple rules when it comes to storing your stash. Don't keep it in your house and don't keep it in the bank. Anywhere else in the world is fine with me. Having a bullion stash is like having nuclear waste. You have to control it, but you don't want to keep it in your house. 
you don't want to bring physical danger to your family. I've read articles about home invasions where people have lost over $750,000 worth of silver. Thankfully, no one was killed in this incident, but it still should serve as a warning to all. So some people don't even know how much wealth is in silver. Well, figure about $50,000 worth of silver would fit into a briefcase. So how hard would it be to hide a briefcase if you had to? Hiding silver is a snap because you really can't destroy it. You could literally throw it into a septic tank and it'll probably be okay. Here's some ideas that I've compiled just to kind of get you thinking. Number one, do what the pirates do. Bury it. This not only protects your stash, but it prevents you from selling it too soon or on an impulse. You can throw them naked into the ground if you want. Many people wrap them up, and some people even go as far as putting them into sealed PVC tubes. In order to prevent snoopers with metal detectors bearing, you can also bury metal decoys or spread nails all over the place. If you have a junker in your yard, you can bury it underneath that. You can put big rocks, bricks, concrete, poison ivy, or pricker bushes over your stash. You can encase the bars in concrete and make them look like cobblestones. You can put layers on your stash, say put 500 ounces at 2 feet, but maybe 5,000 ounces at 6 feet. When you dig, dig with protection or a lookout. There's a lot of open, secluded land that you can hide a stash. Most of the marijuana that is grown in the United States is grown in national parks. Another option is to bury it on the side of a road at, say, mile marker 58. Be sure to be at least 15 feet off the road. Some people say that they've had a boating accident. Hiding silver in the water is best. If you have scuba abilities, that might be the best way to hide it overall. You do have to be careful not to lose your stash because of murky waters or soft bottoms. Never put it into moving water like a river. One good rain, you will lose it. You can use a black cable wire to guide you to your stash. It's hard to see and it's durable. One thing to be sure is that you separate your stash. Never put all your eggs in one basket. Have at least three, four, five stashes, even if they're fairly close. You can have a dummy stash with maybe only 5% of your stash available. You can have a dummy safe in your house for that purpose. This way, if you do get compromised, you can afford to take a small hit without giving up the full Monty. Also, try to differentiate the ways that you hide your stash. Many people simply cannot take physical possession as they are, live in areas that they're not comfortable with. One suggestion I have is that try to store your silver where you think that you would end up going in a crisis situation. Say you have friends and family that may live more out in the country. It is much wiser to store your silver with them than to try to move yourself and your silver in a crisis situation. Another option for people is to store with bullion vaults. This isn't my preferred method. I understand in some circumstances that people simply cannot or simply won't take possession of their silver. If storing your metal is, is an issue, then I would recommend that you stay away from large urban areas and try to store your metal in off-site locations. There are plenty good sites in Utah, which is more off the map than in the major Delaware depositories or in New York. And for people who don't want to go down this route, and you're more of an institutional or really big money, the only other option that I would ever recommend is PSLV, which is Eric Sprott's Physical Trust, or Gold Money with James Turk. If you're going to have counterparty risk with any two people in the world, to me it would be Eric Sprott and James Turk. The best way to keep your stash safe is to shut your mouth. No one needs to know about what you have. If you do get caught or put into a compromising situation, you can say that you lost it, you gambled it, you snorted up your nose, or leprechaun stole your stash. The next question is, how do I sell it? People get really nervous about this one. You can sell it anywhere you can buy it. Bullion is by far the most fungible asset on the planet. You could literally be in the tribal lands of Waziristan and be able to sell a silver coin, but they may not want your Apple stock. One thing you do need to take in consideration is the tax liability, and you should consult a tax accountant for that. You are not taxed at the lower capital gains rate. You are most likely going to be taxed at the 28% collectible tax on your profits. Since I don't plan to ever sell my silver, given the ultimate exit strategy, I haven't really put much thought into this. This is a thinking man's game, and one that will be the most profitable if you put all the pieces together. Good luck and keep stacking.